It's an EV charger that's priced at the bottom end but specced like it wants to be at the top. We'll explore the features, try out a trick we borrowed from another installer and of course fight with the weather. Some say an EV charger is just an outdoor socket with a price tag and builders will always go cheap but this one's got dynamic load management and solar integration built in so in theory it could keep everyone happy. The customer gets the features, the builder keeps the budget in check. For us though the question's simple, how easy is it to fix? It. Let's get stuck in. Our first challenge is just getting inside. The charger's front cover is held on with six screws, all hidden away to keep that front panel looking nice and tidy. Now, that might sound like a pain, but Garrow do include a special angled tool in the kit, so it's not quite as tricky as we first thought. The same screws also hold the mounting plate to the body, so let's get that on the wall first. The advantage of a mounting plate is you're not drilling directly into the charger, which helps preserve that all important IP. 54 rating. On this wall though, which is about as even as a cobbled street, we're marking straight through the bracket for our drill holes. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Grey pencil on a grey wall. A marksman would have made life a lot easier here, but someone hasn't returned it to my tool bag. Around here, we don't happen to have flat walls. So I got this tip from Ross about using frame fixings just to step off the wall so that the unevenness is sorted out. With the bracket securely fixed to the wall, let's take a look at the cable entry options. There's plenty of space at the bottom of the charger for rear entry cables and the pilot holes line up neatly with the back plate. Now I did manage to install this upside down but in our case it doesn't matter. I'm drilling out a new entry to bring the mains cable in from underneath. Garrow supply glands for the power connection plus multiple entry glands if you're using current clamps or a hardwired data link. Of course the moment I say EV charger down comes the rain but I've come prepared with a canopy stretched across the van doors, the charger and my workspace stay dry. The Q-Brick system laughs at the weather and I've even got room to prep everything properly while enjoying a bacon sandwich as the worst of it blows over. With the wall bracket secure we can finally mount the charger in place. For the supply I'm using NYY cable. Yes, the European import that technically we're not supposed to use but every wholesaler sells it. A little departure from the regs I hear you say and yes we've got a video about that. While we're under the cover you can see the chunky DIN rail terminals for the line and neutral connections. The CPC lands on a screw terminal on this extra circuit board that's an add-on module providing pen fault protection. You can see how it works. There's a current transformer around the earth conductor so if any current starts flowing where it shouldn't the unit shuts the charger down. There are also other connection options in here like an ethernet port if you'd prefer to use LAN. In our case it's a simple wiring job. We're relying on Wi-Fi for data. Fingers crossed. We don't need dynamic load management and the property doesn't have solar yet. If those features were needed you'd wire in two current transformers via this plug-in terminal block. If the charger was close to the meter and consumer unit you could connect the CTs directly. But for a surface install further away we'd usually go with Doncaster Cables' EV Ultra just to keep everything neat and tidy. Before we pop the cover back on there's a row of dip switches in here. You'd need to configure those if you were setting up dynamic load management or solar integration. For our simple install no changes needed so cover back on and time for commissioning before making the charger smart though we'd always recommend carrying out your electrical tests at this stage it's much easier with the unit in dumb mode never mind testing Nothing like a real EV to do some proper testing. Commissioning itself is straightforward. First, download the Garrow GEV app from the App Store. And just to note, this is a different app to the one used for Garrow's commercial EV chargers. To put the charger into commissioning mode, hold down the button on the side for around 10 seconds until you hear a beep. After that, the charger should appear in the app, ready to add and connect to Wi-Fi. Once that's done, the charger's good to go. Inside the app, you can set up your charging sessions, either either on a schedule or in eco mode which makes use of excess solar. The app itself is quite techy. You get a really granular view of what's going on. Not just the power being delivered to the car but also current readings from the grid or solar inputs if you've enabled dynamic load balancing. That can be really handy if you want to understand exactly what charging rate you're getting. And if you've already buttoned the cover back on and then remembered the dip switch settings, don't panic. You can see those inside the app too. Of course not everyone likes using apps. So there's 
as an alternative, the charger comes supplied with an RFID card. Just swipe it to start charging. To set that up, you simply enter the card's serial number into the app settings under input instruction, hit confirm, and you're good to go. We've installed the socketed or untethered version here. The Garo GEV is also available in a tethered model with a generous 7.5 meter lead. I'll leave a link in the description to the full range. All in all, it's been a straightforward installation, a budget charger with enough features to meet the needs of most residential jobs. And if you're looking for a charger designed to tackle commercial applications, check out the video on screen now where we take a closer look at the Garrow Entity Pro.